Because my eyes have seen the King, I must tell all the world, worship Him, in all the nations, in all the there it is me again bringing greetings to you my friend i'm always excited to meet with you and guess what heaven is well pleased too once you're with us you will be blessed in god's presence it's only awesomeness so call up your posse tell them tune in on the everlasting arms we're gonna lean Every night we're delving into the word, explaining the truth like you've never before heard. God wants to save us, allow him in. Let's strive to live above reproach and sin. Our past has nothing on us. We have been cleansed in the blood of Jesus. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's always good to see you tuned in, waiting, and ready for another summon. God is well, well pleased. As usual, we begin with singing, and I know that you always enjoy the lovely song service. I'm sure you're at home and you're singing along, you're rocking, you're giving God praise in your heart, in your mind. That is the attitude that we want. So before we go into the song service for tonight, as usual, let's pray. Dear Jesus, we give you thanks, we give you praise. We magnify and glorify your name tonight because you are worthy of all our praise. We thank you for the opportunity to be here another night to proclaim your word. We ask that you would send your holy angels to take full charge, we pray. In your most holy and precious name, amen. So it's time for song service. When you can't say a word, you can smile. Join us as we sing those choruses. Smile a while and give your face a rest. Raise your hands to the one you love the best. Let's shake hands.
won't it be a time when we get over yonder? Won't it be a time when we get over yonder? Won't it be a time when we get over yonder? Won't it be a time? Won't it be a time? Won't it be a time when we get over yonder?
the Lamb. Hymn 246. 246 in the SD hymnal.
Amen. Were you rocking? Hmm. I was. Let's see. Our topic for tonight is failure is not final. I repeat, failure is not final. We're going to do a little re recap. Let's see if our brains are up and active, if we remember some of the topics. So night one, Friday night, what was the topic? Soulmates, very well. And let's see anything we learned there. The soul deepest longing finds its satisfaction in Christ. Good. Sabbath, anybody remembers what we did on Sabbath? What was the topic? The real, the real MVP, very well. Whoa, let's see if we learned anything there. We learned that we should allow God to be the most valuable player in our lives. Good, good, good. I love how we're moving along. Sunday night. Sunday night, Sister Hodalis brought us. She was the host here. I remember that clearly. Let's see if we remember the topic. What was the topic Sunday night? Mm, guilty pleasures. Anything we learned? We need to give up sin that so easily entangles us. Right? All the guilty pleasures. We're moving on nicely. Monday night. What was the topic on Monday night? Am I going to fast? Do you need to type? Monday night, a fear of the heart. Anything we guarded? We need to let God repair our brokenness. Tuesday night. Tuesday night? Uh-huh. Lovely, lovely. Take a better selfie. And we learned that we need to examine ourselves and deny some of the earthly tendencies that we have. Very good, very good. Now it's time for us to take our scripture, which will be followed by an item of special music. And as usual, the scripture is done in the form of poetry, and then we're going to have the song. So let's listen up. This evening's scripture reading is taken from Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 12. Moreover, also, I gave them my Sabbath to be a sign between me and them that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctified them. Stillness fill the heavens on crucifixion day. Some say it rained. I don't know if it's true but I can just imagine 10,000 angels crying that would seem like rain to me and you the angels all stood ready to take him from the tree they waited for the word from his voice and when he asked the father why hast thou forsaken me they watched the Savior die of his own choice. I've never seen ten thousand angels cry, but I'm sure. Ten thousand angels cry. And as I 
Magnificent. I love seeing young people using their talents and their abilities for God. If you don't use it for him, then we're using it for somebody else. There's only two, two ways, right? Either we use it for God or we use it for the devil. And we don't want to be using our talents for the devil. There's a quote I found. It says, when I stand before God at the end of my life, I would hope that I would not have a single bit of talent left, and I could say, I used everything you gave me. So if we keep that mentality and we use everything that God gives us, we would be doing what he expects of us. It's now time for us to give. You have been getting and getting and getting all the blessings that we have here that God is bestowing upon us. So now it's time for us to give back something to God. It says, give and it would be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. So at this time, we're going to have the prayer for the night's offering. Let's go. 
invite you to join me as we pray. Father in heaven, we come before you tonight in the wonderful and precious name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, dear God, for keeping us safe thus far and for continually protecting us. Dear God, we pray your special blessing upon tonight's offering. I pray, dear God, as the persons see it fit to give for your cause, that you would rain down blessings upon their lives. Also, dear Father, I lift up the man of God before you who has been proclaiming your word nightly. I pray, dear God, that you would be with him tonight as he speaks to your people, dear God. I pray also that you would anoint him with the presence of your Holy Spirit so that as he speak on your behalf, dear God, his words may convict hearts and persons may make that decision to give their lives to you. I pray, dear God, that you would be with all those who are viewing at present. And Father, as the word is being proclaimed, I pray that they would give it their undivided attention. And at the end of the proclamation of your words, lives will be changed and persons would come to know you as king. Lord, bless tonight's service. Bless everyone present and bless all those who are viewing for we ask this in no other name, but in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Remember, everyone is welcomed here. And remember, you can join our Zoom room for prayer. And we have some hotline numbers as well. All of these things, I think it's going to be on your screen, but I can just remind us, 403K. Right, and then the Zoom link, you can go and get prayer. And that's what I mean. So we, we take care and you get prayer. Very well, very well. Now, I, I want to acknowledge, you know, our youth director for this initiative, Pastor Lyons. That's a very good initiative. And I think that he needs some acknowledgement. And we want to um, ask God to continue to bless him and his ministry and his family. Megafest 2021 Metamorphosis. Give God all the praise and may God continue to bless you so that you can do more and more for him. We're going to take in our little drama presentation for tonight, followed by a special item of music. Hello, everyone. It is so good being with you for another session of your Youth Mega Fest. We are happy for all the blessings that God has been bestowing, and I pray that God would continue to bless and keep you as a conference as you celebrate the goodness of God. I just want to bring to you a special session um, dealing with how we can help our youth, our children tackle the issue of divorce. Now, while the Bible stipulates one legitimate reason for divorce, within and without our church, um, the plague of divorce um, affects many families. And while the process can be messy, Sometimes in the cleanest of divorce settlements, we still find one party or one set of persons that are most gravely affected, and that would be our children. Divorce, like any other um, life-altering event or life-changing event, can be very traumatic for those involved. And children at their vulnerable ages and vulnerable um, exp um, moment in time can experience this in a different way. And so here are some tips as to how our children and youth can better navigate their way through the issue of divorce if it ever comes to them. Um, firstly, um, children, need, children need to understand that while their parents may, may be divorced from each other, ideally, the parents are not divorced from them. In other words, mother and father may have their disagreements with each other, but um, as far as possible, except in extreme cases, um, the children are not to be separated from either of their parents. Both parents are to still be present and supportive of their children during 
um, this difficult time and even after um, the divorce has been settled. Secondly, for children, it is good to verbalize and, and, and share your feelings and, and own your feelings as you feel them. Um, divorce is a traumatic event. It can leave um, feelings of sadness, feelings of hurt, feelings of anger. And while we don't want you to do anything to do harm or injure yourself or others, it is still good to know and, and feel how you feel. Um, it is also good to talk it out, um, preferably with a parent or a counselor. Let them know how you feel and be honest and open with your feelings without being rude or disrespectful. Um, it is also good for children at this time to, as far as possible with the parents' help, not disrupt their regular activities. Um, while the divorce puts a, a rift in what seems to be normal life and living, instead of living with two parents and now living with one, um, as far as possible, everything that should still be as routine as possible to give some sense of normalcy, even if it's a new kind of normal. Parents, um, during this difficult time, it is important that you try your best to be there for your children regardless. Um, it is good to help legitimatize or legitimatize, yes, legitimatize your children's feelings. Um, let them know that what they're feeling is okay. If they feel hurt, if they feel upset, if they feel angry, um, let them know that those feelings are natural and part of the process of getting through this traumatic event. It is also good that as parents you be honest and open as far as possible with your children. You may not be able to share all the details, but be able to contextualize it in a way that they can understand. You can say something like, sometimes mothers and fathers um, don't agree with each other all the time. And in some cases, it's difficult to resolve the issue, just for an example. Another thing that parents should strive to do and be for their children is, again, be present with and for your children during this difficult time. Um, it is a lot of pressure, and it's a lot of, it can come with a lot of challenges, but as far as possible as well, you don't want to um, demonize, for want of a better word, the other spouse. You don't want to make the other person, other parent look bad, because while you may have issues with each other, the child or the children as far as possible, still love both of their parents, and want to love both of them equally, even if they are apart from each other. Um, two final thoughts. As far as possible for both parents and children, try to stay healthy. Try to eat well, get enough rest. Even though even resting might be a challenge, um, do your best as far as possible to maintain a healthy lifestyle. It will help during this difficult time. And above all else, um, ask for God's guidance and his, his comfort during this difficult time. God is still able to help families who are troubled by divorce and are going through difficult times. And God is even willing to restore as far as individuals allow. May God help us as we seek to help our children navigate through difficult times and difficult issues. May God continue to bless us all.
your light is breaking through the dark of night will not overtake me for I am pressing into you and Lord you found You're my defender, you're my refuge in the storms, and through these trials, you've always been faithful, you bring healing to my Lovely, lovely. So we have everything in the house. We have poetry. If you're writing poems, then you are a poet, right? Then we have drama. So if you're writing play, you are a playwright. Very well. And that's two things that I love very much, drama and poetry. And well, I love singing as well, but I can't really sing. But the others, I could do it, right? But nevertheless, let's use our talents and whatever God has given to us. Let's use it for him. It is now time for the spoken word. Megafest 2021 metamorphosis, change, transformation. We cannot be the same. Now, I need you to sign up for a baptism. Now, there are the cards. You see it on your screen how you can go and make that decision. We don't want you to go through this entire series and then we're still lost. So if you have not yet given your heart to Jesus, now is the time to sign up. Let's do that before it becomes too late. And those of us who are already baptized, let's remember to recommit. Daily we have to ask for strength. Daily we have to ask for forgiveness. Daily we have to seek God's help, guidance, and protection. Right? So remember you can make your decision. 
Very well. So now, as I was saying, it is time for the night's message. And of course, pastor is here. He is waiting for God to use him in a mock, mighty, and marvelous way. So we're going to have the praise team come on. And then the next voice you will be hearing is that of God's manservant. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous can run into and there be safe. This is our miracle moment. Once again, we have come to Mega Fest Metamorphosis 2021. And we believe that God is able to work a miraculous transformation in your life. The Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 22. The, Luke, the book of Luke chapter 22 verse 31 and 32 the Bible says and the Lord said Simon, Simon behold Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you like wheat but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not and that when thou art converted, strengthen the brethren. This evening, Jesus pulls back the curtain. And he says that he speaks to his beloved disciple Peter. And he calls him by name with love. The double vocative in the Greek. Simon, Simon. The devil is asking for you he has targeted your life he wants to sift you he wants to shake your life up he wants to bruise you and he wants to break you but the devil is not the only one at play in your life Jesus is saying Peter I am with you I have prayed for you that your faith will not fail. He's saying, Peter, there is one place I don't want you to fail and that's in your faith walk with me. There is failure in many areas of your life. But, but Peter, I don't want you to fail this test. 
You may get at some bruises. The cock will crow three times. You will deny me three times before the cock crows twice. But Peter, I want you to hold on even when you fail and when you come back. When you go through that failure, Peter, I don't want your faith in me to fail. There are many people who have gone through various failures in their lives. But God is saying when you mess up, don't let your faith fail. When you fail, do not fail in faith. Hold on to Jesus today, tonight. And if you would like special prayer so that your faith will not fail, that you would hold on strong in the midst of despairing circumstances, you want God to lift you up, you want him to embrace you, you want him to undergird you, you want him to support you as you go through some of the most difficult circumstances in your life. There is a prayer card in the, in the chat it's pinned above the chart just click on that prayer card and place your name down there for prayer we would like to pray for you tonight we would like not only to pray tonight but in the midnight hour while you are sleeping we want to be praying for you in the morning we have a group of people praying and we will pray you through that your faith fail not as you go to that prayer card we will sing a wonderful song give them all to Jesus Give them all to Jesus. Give them all to Jesus. Give them all to Jesus. Go to that card in the link and give it all to Jesus. And at the feet of Jesus, lay and them the down. Feet of Jesus, lay them down. Give you them all. Give them all to Jesus. Shall the dreams from their hearts and broken souls. Give them all. promise you'll only see sunshine he never said you'll only see sunshine he never said there will be no rain he never said there will be no rain he only promised a heart full of singing he only promised a heart full of singing that's the very thing that at the very that's thing that very once thing brought pain just give it to Jesus as you go to the prayer link. Give your life to Jesus. Father, we bow in your presence asking for you to turn things around. 
your people have come some of them are in desperation and some of them oh father just want an opportunity for a better experience young people oh father many of them are tormented by their failures and they think oh god that they cannot measure up with others and so many have given up hope because they have looked outside of the window of their lives and they are comparing themselves with somebody else some of them think as if life and the world and opportunities are passing them by but father we pray that you would hold young people's hand today you will give them hope in a world that does not care may they understand that you are their father you stick closer than a brother and they are your child and you have a plan for their destiny and so father even as we go into this word tonight we pray that you will bless every listener and we will grow stronger in our love and faith in you we thank you in jesus name let god's people say amen amen i want to thank the praise team amen amen put your hands together for them ladies and gentlemen also would like to thank our technicians they've been doing a great job on the sound on the mic on the on the stream would somebody say amen put your hands together for them ladies and gentlemen young people engaged in service for the master we pray that you would experience powerful blessings as a result of their ministry. Put your hands together for them, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we go into a very important sermon. A sermon that should transform your outlook on your life. This is a sermon for every young person. I have learned some of these lessons the hard way and have come back being battle scarred to help you to overcome in your personal challenges. Our the topic message. tonight is failure is not final. And this topic is very significant to every human being. We will have challenges in life. And I've learned some of the things I want to share with you the hard way from experience. And I'm coming here to help you to understand failure is not final. Oh yes, while many people uh, love winners, we all love winners. And we, we, we stand by people who win and, and we don't identify with people who lose. Just the story, recent story of Shakari Richardson would show you that while everybody loved her attitude when she pointed at the clock showing how fast she was, when she failed and she lost, people turned on her because everybody loves a winner and nobody loves a loser. Nobody loves to experience failure and loss. We name our children Victor and Victoria because we want them to be triumphant in life circumstances. We follow the winning teams and so they are Chelsea fans and we claim the team. We say that's my team. And you may be a, a basketball fan and you, and you may be a fan of the Cleveland Cavaliers or the Los Angeles Lakers and you say that's my team. Because we love to identify with success, victory, and triumph. However, that is not always the human story. Human beings fail. And we fail at many things in life. We may pretend that our life is a success story by posting and portraying all our successes. We boast about them, but we are private about our failures and our losses. Oh, we celebrate winners like Usain Bolt as Caribbean people. We celebrate uh, the great basketball players as black people. We celebrate the greatest batsman, uh, Brian Lara, as West Indians. And Grenadians will celebrate one of the greatest athletes of all time, Kirani James, a great 400-meter runner. 
Although we love to show that we are successful, many times human beings fail. We fail at marriage. We fail at business. We fail our, at our courses and educational degrees. We make poor choices. We fail at relationships. Sometimes parents fail their children and children fail their parents. Many times even pastors fail and spiritual people are retrenched from jobs and you feel like a failure. Your church may be declining and you may feel like a failure. They may cut you from, from, from the elite, from the team and you may fail like a feel like a failure but i'm here to tell you today failure is not final this is not the end of the world and it's not the end of your road god has plans for you i remember an acronym in my primary school pray hard work hard play hard and under that they used to tell us if at first you don't succeed try 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 again Everything that is worth pursuing, my friends and young people, everything worth achieving has an element of risk, risk of failure. I asked someone, a friend of mine very recently, uh, who, had very, who has very big dreams, uh, and, uh, and as we discussed them, I asked her, what is your biggest fear? And she was able to place that biggest fear in context with her biggest desire. Because our biggest fear is usually that we are not successful at our biggest endeavors. Everything worth pursuing opens us up to risk. What is that dream in your life? What is that thing you are working towards? What is that thing you are afraid to start for fear of failing? Oh yes, Denzel Washington, a great actor, he said, I have no backup plan. I have nothing to fall back on. I'm coming from a poor background, but I want to be a movie star. He tried in the theater for a role and he failed one year. He tried again and he failed. They told him that he doesn't have the right accent. He went to practice that accent. And the next year he came and he tried again and he got that part. I'm telling you today. And he came back and he said, you don't have to fall. Don't be afraid to fall. But if you fall at trying to achieve, fall forward. Fall forward. Fall going towards your goal. Martin Luther King Jr. said, if you cannot walk, crawl. If you cannot, if you cannot, if you cannot run, walk. If you cannot walk, crawl. But, but keep on moving forward. Embracing failure. It is how we learn to grow. When we say, when we try, but it, but it is worth trying. Everybody has the talent to succeed. But not everybody has the guts to fail. And that makes the difference between the good and the great. To try a big task. You have to dream big. And you need to step out into a realm that you have not done before. And if you have never failed, it means you have never tried anything beyond your capacity and therefore you will not grow. Did you hear that? If you have never failed, it means you have never tried anything beyond your proven abilities. But for you to grow, you need to grasp higher than you can reach. You need to try more than you have done the day before. And when you fail, you are able to learn how to grow. To get something you have never had, you need to do something you have never done. And that opens you to failure. Tiger Woods was a great success. He was a boy star. In 1986, he won his first international tournament, the Vegas International. In 1997, he won the first, the biggest golf tournament in the world. In 1997, the Masters Tournament. 
And he won it over and over again for many years. 2001, 2002, 2007, and 2005. And the last big tournament he won was in 2007. That was the PGA Tour. And then he had a, a professional meltdown. In 2009, there was a scant Tiger Woods scandal where he being a religious person, he was involved with e in, in immorality. And in 2009, they took away his endorsements because his name fell into bad company. His name came off the, the cereal boxes and the, and the, and the shoes. And the clothes. And people were forgetting about Tiger Woods. Because he no longer brought in the money. He was no longer a name to stand by. Oh yes, he fell into addiction. He became injured in many ways. His health deteriorated. He began to age. He lacked the focus. And many professionals laughed when they saw Tiger Woods Pick up a golf club again. They called him a former golfer. Every, every professional commentator who was asked, do you think Tiger Woods would ever run, rise to the top? They said, no, he will never win any major championship again. His body is too battered. His mind is too bruised. He, is, he has gone through addiction. He has been arrested by police. He has a broken back. He has destroyed the greatest body and the greatest swing that we have ever seen in golf. But Tiger's back. After 1,876 days since his last major win, after 12 years of failure, he proved that failure is not final. Would somebody say amen? In 2019, Tiger Woods turned the entire professional world as he won a master's tournament in his 40s at the age of 43. The greatest, and they, they have called this comeback the greatest comeback in the history of sports. Being undaunted through failure is the only way to grow. Being unfazed by the people who laugh at you and the people who count you out. Is the, is the only way to grow. Nelson Mandela puts it this way. When you look at Nelson Mandela, I, I have some heroes that I look to. Earthly heroes. Then I'll bring you to the heavenly hero. He, Nelson Mandela, he spent 27 years in prison. He says, there is no passion to be found in playing small. For settling for life that is less than the one you are capable of living. Nelson Mandela says never settle. He says never settle. He says dream big. They offered him release from prison to come back and to accept that, 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 that dehumanizing societal uh, 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 thing called apartheid. And he said no, never. He moved from the prison and he became the first black president of South America. South Africa, sorry. And he says, dream big. Would somebody say amen? amen? Michael Jordan, one of my favorite athletes. I believe he's the GOAT. The greatest of all time. Would somebody say amen? Michael Jordan, you would give him the clutch shot and he will win. He got a three-peat world championships and then he retired for a year. And after another year, he came back and won it again. Three-peat again. Nobody can test Michael Jordan. He's the greatest of all time. Michael Jordan said, I have lost 9,000 shots in my career. I have lost over 300 games. 26 times I was trusted with the game winning shot and I missed. I have failed over and over again. And that is why I succeed. 
said, I've failed over and over and I've accepted my failure. I'm not afraid of missing the shot. So I will take the shot and I will make it because I have no fear of missing it. Would somebody say amen? He says, that's where I, I succeed. And so Michael Jordan says, be consistent. Nelson Mandela says, be th dream big. Michael Jordan says, be consistent. There's another guy I love, Henry Ford. He was the first person to, 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 to invent the automobile. And he, tr he failed many times. But Henry Ford said failure is simply an opportunity to be begin again. This time more intelligently. And so he says, be determined. Thomas Alva Edison, my namesake, my middle name is Alva. Hello, somebody. He made the world's first durable incandescent bulb. Before that, every bulb they lit was, was, was a disposable. The bulb will burn and then burn out. But this time, he created after 10,000 times failing to make a durable light bulb. He finally made it work. And Thomas Alva, Thomas Alva Edison says, I've found, I've not failed, he says. I've not failed. I have just found 10,000 ways it wouldn't work. And so Thomas Alva Edison says, in your life, be optimistic. So as you face life, I'm encouraging you to dream big, according to Mandela. To be consistent according to, uh, uh, um, to, to, to Michael Jordan. To be determined according to Henry Ford. And to be optimistic according to Thomas Alva Edison. But we need to go to the, the, the Bible and find out what is God's secret for success. And God says, be ye transformed. In the struggle of life. The only person who can give us true victory. The one who can engineer our direction to overcome the devil who is trying to make us fall and fail is Jesus Christ. And so Jesus says, be transformed. Yeah. Romans chapter 5 verse 12 says, wherefore as by one man sin entered the world, Adam failed. And death by sin. And death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. Adam failed. And because of Adam's failure, we all, we all are born failures. Born in sin. Shaping in iniquity. Verse 15 says, but not as the offense, so the free gift. Would somebody say amen? So Adam made us fail, but Jesus makes us succeed. The Bible says, for if through one offense, one man brought death, much more the grace of God, that the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abound to many. If Adam has the power to pass on failure to all of us, Jesus has more power to pass on success to all of us. Because of Adam's failure, we all fail. But because of Jesus' success, we have surpassing victory. Jesus is more powerful than Adam. And so the Bible says, For if by one man's offense, verse 17, death reigned by one, much, much more, would somebody say amen, would, uh, will, will grace reign because of Jesus? And so Jesus, that one man, gives us the assurance for success. And he says in Romans chapter 12 verse 1, I beseech you, I beg you, I implore you young people, by the mercies of God, present your bodies unto God. Acceptable. And be he, excuse me, be he, do not be conformed to this world. Do not allow this world to box you into its shape. But be he transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is a cruel, corrupt world. And God is saying, don't let your mind be boxed in to this world. Do not live according to what people think you are or predetermined that you should be. 
you know this world is so crooked? When we're talking about good, we say bad. Am I speaking the truth? Yes, yes, yes. If that, if, if that juice good, it, and that juice real good. I love juice. That is some bad juice, boy. Are we together? That is some bad juice. But, but you see, our, in our twisted minds, bad was not bad enough to describe good. So we say, boy, that shoe, that shoe real good. That shoe past bad going, that shoe wicked. And wicked was not wicked enough to describe bad, which we use to describe good. So boy, boy, you see that movie? Boy, that movie sick. Because our minds are sick. And sick seems good. I'm driving down the road one day and two schoolboys talking. And they're walking. Boy, I'm sicker than you, boy. you sicker than me. Why are you sicker than me? Boy, I'm sicker than you. you sicker than me. Boy, you are sick, sick yet. Boy, I'm sick, 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 sick. And I'm saying them two fellas need to go to the hospital. They're sick. But sick wasn't sick enough to describe wicked. That was used to describe bad. That was used to describe good. Are we together? That's how demented we are spiritually. We do not know the difference between good and bad. And so we have gone further. Boy, you heard that song, boy? That song, mad. And so humanity has gone from good to bad, to wicked, to sick, to mad. And so God says, be he what? Transformed. He said, I don't want no mad children. Would somebody say amen? I don't want no sick children. I don't want no wicked children. I want some people who are transformed. It doesn't matter where you come from or where you have been. God can transform you. God loves difficult cases. The Bible says, for God, for all things work together for good to those who love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. If your life is mad and sick and wicked and bad, God can transform you. Would somebody say amen? The Bible tells us that he is in the transforming business. God is keen on turning failures into success. Ask Joseph, who was in the pit and then went into slavery and then went into prison, how God made him prime minister. God loves the underdog. He says, I put you as sheep among wolves. Our God loves the underdog. He took, he wanted a deliverer to deliver Israel and so he chose a slave boy who was in the Nile. He takes little people and does big things. God wanted to destroy Jericho and he didn't choose a big army. He chose some people who all they had was faith and prayer. And he says, walk around Jericho and pray a silent prayer march for seven days. And at the end of the day, all you have is your shout. That's what I want you to do is shout. And he changed them from nomads to conquerors. Oh yes, God wanted to have a nation and he chose a young boy, a, a, a supplanter, a, a deceiver. He was born out of turn. Are we together? He was the younger without the birthright, but God chose him to make him Israel. God wanted his people to overcome the Philistines and he chose one man, not an army, not with any knife and sword. God gave him a job out of a donkey and he beat thousands of men. God can transform you. When God wanted a great, 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 great grandmother for Jesus, he chose a, a prostitute in the window in Jericho. Are we together? Rahab the harlot. She accommodated God's people and God took her from a harlot to the progenitor of the Savior. I don't know what you have been through or what you have been in. My God can save you. Oh yes, when God wanted a man to stand against a giant, he went to look for a boy who had no training with swords. All he knew was how to keep sheep. 
And when everybody for 40 days, Goliath is saying, send, send, send. Me a man, a man, a man. God send a boy. Would somebody say amen? But with a boy, God will take down the biggest, the most formidable fall to Israel. Oh yes, God uses the, 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 the son who, was, who came from a previous adulterous relationship and made him the wisest man who ever lived. God chose the three Hebrew boys to stand up and he showed up himself in the midst of the fire and he, and he showed up in, that, in, in the lion's den. Oh yes, my friend, when God wanted to save the world, he didn't choose an army, he didn't choose a king, he didn't come with royal birth, he came as a carpenter's son. I'm telling you today that God can transform everything that is rough into something that is glorious. And he can transform your life. Your failure is not final. Because Jesus specialized, specializes in difficult cases. The worse it gets, the better God works. So you think your life is over? You think you have no future? I have news for you. You ain't seen nothing yet. God loves to work on miraculous or on difficult cases. So that his name will get the glory. God loves to transform even Jesus' apparent failure. Jesus' apparent failure on the cross. He changed the cross from a symbol of death to a symbol of life. His apparent failure qualifies him to be your savior. Many people looked at him on the cross and said he failed. But the cross is where he succeeded. Would somebody say amen? Many times the failure and the challenge you go through is just a road bump. It's just a hurdle so that you can get to God's destination for you. As I get ready to close off this message, I want to send you to the book of 1 Corinthians. Chapter 1, verse 24. The Bible says, but not many are called, but not but unto them that are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. Would somebody say amen? amen. And the weakness of God stronger than men. For he see your calling, brethren, not too many wise after the flesh. Not many mighty. Not many noble are called. But God hath chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. God hath chosen the weak things of this world to confound the things which are mighty. The best things of the world the things that have been despised have God chosen. Yea, the things that are not to bring to naught the things that are so that no flesh may glory in his presence. And I've come to the realization that sometimes God allows failures in our lives so that we can know where our success comes from. Sometimes God has to make you go through the trenches. Before he brings you to the highest hills. Sometimes he has to take you through the valleys. Before he takes you to the mountain. So that when you reach on the mountain. You would know it is not you. But this is the work of the Lord. It is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our eyes. Sometimes God has to take you from depression before he brings you to victory. He says, I don't choose the wise. I don't choose the noble. I don't choose many mighty. Because we will think it's because of their money and their popularity and their ability and their language. I choose the humble things of this world to bring to naught the things that are. And so many times your hardship is a hurdle for, your, for, for, for God's victory in your life. So that you would know and the people around you would know it is the Lord's doing. And it's marvelous in our eyes. In this, when we are minimized, 
God is ready to be maximized. When we have become the sacrifice, God is ready to be glorified. When we have sanctified ourselves, God is ready to be magnified. When the flesh has been mortified, Jesus is ready to show himself strong. Would somebody say amen? amen. And so my people, today you are a work in progress. God loves works in progress. Some people like ready-made people. Some women, they're looking for a husband, they want a ready-made man. Are we together? They don't want any man to develop with them. Are we together, Pastor Lyons? They want a ready-made man. They want him to talk right, look right, speak right, smell right. They want his tie to match with his shirt and his shoe. Are we together? But I'm telling you, sometimes God, God has a project he's working on. And, some, and, and you are not a ready-made woman. Why you want a ready-made man? You yourself is a pure project in God's eyes. And so if he loves the Lord... If he's humble and he's teachable, God can help you to fix the things together. Would somebody say amen? amen. Some men want ready-made women, but you're not a ready-made man. God is still working on you. God is still working on her. God loves projects. Would somebody say amen? <laughs> you know, I have thought about my challenges in life. And God brought me to a very, very significant verse of scripture it's on the screen it says I, I, and I understand I'm saying Lord why do I have to go through all those hurdles and God said to me it's because I want you to be better I have to refine you in the fire and so I got this verse it says it's on your screen Moab hath been at ease from his youth and he has settled on his lees. And he has not been emptied from vessel to vessel. Neither has he ever gone into captivity. Therefore his taste remaineth in him. And his scent is not changed. Now, now you may not understand what this text means. And so I will explain it to you. He is saying, he is saying that, Pastor John I want you to go to that experience of Moab and Israel. Israel went through trouble and trial and captivity. Over and over again, Israel's life was turbulent, but Moab was in ease. Moab never seemed to have any failure while Israel was failing over and over again. And God is saying, because Israel, they are my people. I have to test them. I have to try them. I have to make them develop. Are we together? You know what the Bible is saying about Moab? It is talking about a wine refining process. So after they stamp and they tread the grapes, they will pour out all the wine into one vessel and make it settle. And after it settles and all the dregs and the fiber sinks to the bottom, they would take that pot, are we together? And pour out the grape juice into another pot. And so all the leaves would remain in that pot. But we know that there will be some, some, some leaves that would still be some pulp. Are we together? That will still be in the other pot. And so they will make it settle again. Are we together? And after it settles, they will pour it out into another pot. And they will make it settle again. And after it settles and the leaves settle, they would pour it out again. And that grape juice would be sweet. Would somebody say amen? It will be sweet, it will be nice, it will be enjoyable, it will be refined, it would be the best tasting. And so God's saying, that's what I did with Israel. I didn't just leave them to settle in one place. I had to stir them up. I had to pour them out. And pour them out. And pour them out. And pour them out. But Moab is not so. Moab just stayed there. After they treaded the grapes, Moab just stayed there. And the wine settled on its lees. And it began to stink. Are we together? And it began to get strong. And it began to get thick. And nobody wants to drink it. God says, I've stirred up your life. Because I want to refine you into what I want you to be. I don't want you to settle on your lees. Your failure! 
has been for my glory. If it were not for the hardship in your life, you wouldn't be where God has called you to be. If it wouldn't be for, if it wasn't for the stirring up and the pouring out and the pouring out in your life, you wouldn't be where God wanted you to be today. So thank God for every trial. Thank God for all the people who were against you because it contributed to God making you who you are today and your failure is not final, my friend. You may have failed yourself. You may have failed your parents. You may have failed loved ones. But I'm telling you today, sometimes your setback is a setup for a comeback. And so I want to make an appeal today that you come to Jesus Christ. He is able to do glorious things for you. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him, whatever condition you are in, you should not perish but have everlasting life. God the greatest lover. So loved the greatest extent. The world the greatest number. That he gave the greatest act. His only son the greatest gift. That whosoever the greatest invitation. Believeth the greatest simplicity. In him the greatest person. Should not perish the greatest deliverance. But the greatest exception. He can change your life today. Have the greatest assurance. Everlasting life. The greatest possession. You can get that brand new life today. You can be, you can live above your failures. You can emerge above your hardships. As you let the greatest man who ever lived hold your hand. Go through the link today. There is a link showing up in your chat. It's pinned at the top there and it's in the chat. And say, I want the greatest deliverance. I want to be baptized. I want my failure to be transformed into success. As the praise team comes to sing the appeal song, go to that link. And click that link. And give your life to Jesus. Go all the way with him in the watery grave of baptism. That's a brand new start. It's a birth. If you want to start to live a life with Jesus, you need to be born in Christ. And this is your new start. Because your failure is not final. You have messed up academically, but it's not final. You have messed up emotionally. You have gone from relationship to relationship. And now you are all alone, but it's not final. Your relationship, your marriage is in hardship. But it's not final, my friends. Your failure is not final. That is not the end of God's story for you. God has a brighter plan for your future. As we sing that song, give them all. Give them all to Jesus. God can change your sorrows into joy. Go to that link and click that link as the praise team sings. Give it all to Jesus. He never said you only be so shy. He never said, never said there'll be no rain. Oh, sing that song, sing that song. Give them all to Jesus. Give them all. Give them all. Give them all. Give them all to Jesus. Shatter dreams, broken hearts, broken toys. 
Give them all to Jesus. Never said you'd only see sunshine. He never said you'd only see sunshine. He never said there'll be no rain. He never said there'll be no rain. He only promised a heart full of singing. Oh yes, he will bring you joy, my friend. That's the very thing that once brought pain. Give it all to Jesus. Give it to Him. Give it all. Give them all. Give them all to Jesus. Give your failures to Jesus. He will give you success. Give them all. Give them all. Give them all to Jesus. into joy give them all give them all to Jesus broken toys give them all give them all give them all to Jesus That link click that link right on your screen in the chat and sign up for baptism oh yes there is an opportunity to start all over again there is an opportunity to follow Jesus tonight right in the chat your salvation is only a click away click that link and link up with your destiny God has a plan for your future. Help us to help you. By signing your name and giving us your contact number. We have a team of ministers who are ready to reach out to you. And we can help you. God is able to help you. You have experienced brokenness. But God can put the pieces back together again. He can make your future brighter than your past. He is a God who loves. He specializes in great outcomes. And so tonight if you want to give your life to Jesus. You want Jesus to lead your life. That one man Jesus can change what you have broken in your life. Shall we pray tonight, Father? We bow our heads. Your people have heard your word. They have received marching orders that their failure is not final. And even though they have messed up, you have a plan for their future. And so God, we pray that they will hold on to the everlasting arms of Jesus. They will not attempt to live according to their own power. May they understand that they have a maker. They have a creator who has a destiny in mind for them. And so, Father, may they reach out to you, click that link and hold your hand and pull them up into the place where they belong. Rescue souls all across Grenada and beyond tonight. May salvation come to every heart. In Jesus' name we pray. We thank you. Let the church say. Let everybody say. Amen. Amen. Failure is not final. God indeed has a plan for our lives. 
another insightful sermon. May God continue to bless you, Pastor, and your family as well. Right, so it was a pleasure being here tonight. I know you enjoyed, you were blessed. I was blessed as well. And I will be back tomorrow night. Will you be back tomorrow night? I am hoping to see you. We thank everybody for tuning in. Thank you for sharing the link and inviting your friends. We thank all those in-house as well, the media team, always here, wet, um, willing to, to allow God to use them so that all of these things can flow smoothly and in order. So thank you once again for tuning in. Remember, our topic for tomorrow night is... Netflix and chill. Very, very interesting. You cannot afford to miss it. So until tomorrow night, take care.